This series is made possible by all of my patrons. More about that at the end of the video. All right, I do not want to hear if, like, if this looks crazy, I don't want to hear about it because it's very humid today. And I tried my best to show up looking my best. And sometimes life doesn't work out the way you imagine it. Maybe my next series can be Life Wisdom or something like that. Welcome to another installment of Hoya Summer Camp. We have only two more episodes and I do plan to film them both right now. So if <laughs> in the last episode I look completely out of this world, melted like the Wicked Witch of the West, I'm sorry, maybe a puddle will talk to you. The reason why we're doing them together is because they are related, but also we need to separate them because it's gonna be way too long. And so far, none of the episodes were in that 10 to 15 minute range, which was the original idea of this summer camp. So you're welcome. You got the long episodes here, but also we gotta, we gotta shut up and talk less. Today we will talk about when to repot the Hoya, what are some of the signs, and what pots to use. So let's start with demystifying the first part of this. When is the right time to repot a Hoya? I particularly don't believe there is a specific season when you should repot your Hoyas. Of course this will depend on your conditions, so if you don't grow in a room that is warm, and if you don't grow under grow lights, or if you don't have a lot of natural light, then we can talk about the seasons. And in that case, the best time would probably be spring to repot your plant. But I do repot all of my plants all year round when I get to them, and sometimes that can take a while. And the reason why I can do that is because they are actively growing at all times. In winter, there are grow lights. In summer and spring, grow lights also because I have two northwest facing windows. And the temperature in the room stays pretty much consistent throughout the year. So we try to be in the 21 to 25 range. Sometimes it gets a bit hotter when it's summer. In winter, it doesn't really get below 20. So they are, for the most part, growing actively. Of course, there are periods when they are growing a bit more, periods when they're growing a bit less. But in that case, there is just no bad time, in my opinion, to repot a plant. There are some cases when I typically avoid repotting a Hoya, and that is when it's about to bloom for the first time. Some people can repot without losing the buds, and that has certainly happened to me as well. But if a plant is really going to bloom for the first time, and I've been waiting for a long time to see that, I'm gonna just wait and not really mess with it. But of course, some Hoyas are more sensitive than others, so if you suspect that your Hoya is more sensitive than I would not repot it. Another quote-unquote rule that I do not under any circumstances adhere to is not to repot your Hoya when you buy it. I typically wait maybe for a week, maybe two weeks, depends how long the shipping was and what I judge that the stress was. Some people will tell you don't repot for a month or two, they give you warranties and whatnot. I do not adhere to this because nine out of ten cases the plants that arrive to me that are potted, which I also avoid for several reasons, they're going to arrive in mixes that are not adequate for my growing conditions, for the way that I like to grow my plants and how frequently or infrequently I do water them. And a lot of the times they will arrive very, very wet. Actually, I had both. They arrived very, very dry, too dry, and then I had plants that arrived very, very wet. Another reason why I like to repot Hoyas right away is because I've been burned several times and I got Hoyas with root mealybugs and that needs to be absolutely taken care of right away. Of course, if you have the space and you can quarantine the plant, I always recommend that. Sometimes maybe there isn't enough space or sometimes, you know, you just don't notice. You don't think about that. You forget, oh, check the roots, see if there are root mealybugs, and then you introduce them to your collection. So I'm definitely not one of those people that is not going to repot their new plant once it arrives and Honestly, I never really had any issues with this. Of course, some reasonable amount of time is expected to be waited, but sometimes the plants arrive in such a bad shape that you have to do something about it right away or you will lose the plant. We will take a look at a couple of examples here of plants that I'm going to repot and plants that I'm not going to repot. If you grow in pond or if you grow in semi-hydro versus the organic mixes, you will have by now noticed something and that is that roots typically 
basically grow a lot faster in pond. I tend to not repot the plants when they look like they need to be repotted. And usually we judge this, we look, you know, at the bottom of the pot and roots coming out. And I don't always repot them when I see the roots coming out. And the simple answer for this is I know that that root did not fill out the entire pot. There is no way that it filled out the entire pot. But the reason why it starts going down, especially in self-watering, is because there is moisture there and roots will go towards the moisture. In that case, I will just leave it as is. Sometimes I will cut off those roots, most likely not because who has the time to check every pot, but I have started to make it a practice. When I do repot, I typically don't try to save those roots because they're gonna get damaged anyways and they're going to rot anyways, or in most cases, so I don't tend to save those roots. When it comes to organic mixes, the situation is a little bit different because organic mixes tend to break down over some period of time. So maybe two, three years, they will have broken down and then the acidity of the mix will be lower. There is a range that plants can no longer tolerate and then you can experience root issues. In many cases, plants need to be repotted every two years. Sometimes they do it every year, but that is also because of my bad choices, which I will talk about later. Another thing to consider is when you do grow in pond, pond does not break down. There will be a lot of dust, but pond does not break down. So at one point, the roots will have filled out all the space in the pot and you will need to repot your plant. With the organic mixes, the mix will break down and, you know, parts of mixes will wash away when you water. And you have seen on the internet, these root bound plants that are so root bound, there is almost no no soil left and that is because the mixes break down and then if we shower them frequently those parts will be flushed away. That does not happen in pond. Pond will stay there and that can become an issue if you keep in the same pot for way too long. But those are just my opinions based on my opinions. <laughs> which is really what this channel is all about. Something that I would like to discuss is choosing the right size of the pot. And people like to tell you that Hoyas will grow best if they are root bound in the smallest possible pot that you can find. And I don't find any proof of this. In fact, for me, this makes the watering much more difficult. You need to water more frequently. I have been growing Hoyas for five or six years. I have over 350 Hoyas with over a third of them blooming 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 and they're all obviously not all five or six years old a majority of them is i think maybe three years old because in the beginning we were struggling to get them but now we are no longer struggling we're struggling not to get them i have not found any evidence that the size of the pot will matter for some ways they say the bigger pot the better something like hoya imperialis you need to put in a big pot and that actually might be true some hoyas will just grow absolutely humongous and you're not going to be able to tame those or to keep them in a 12 centimeter pot it really depends on the hoya small leaved hoyas okay i agree you can grow a lot of small leaved hoyas in 12 centimeter pot and a lot of those are not going to actually need anything that is over 12 centimeters but hoyas with big leaves will grow big and they will eventually need to be sized up unless maybe you you know you can trim the root ball you can trim the plant there are things we can do to keep our plants small trimming the root ball is something that you know sometimes it is done typically they say you can trim one third of the root ball i have seen some people trim a whole lot more and i just want to say we're not do, you know this is not a bonsai with some more sensitive hoyas i would not do that but if the hoya is very resilient a very fast grower then i don't think it can actually hurt it that much but to circle back here to this small pot i have not found this to be proof a lot of people do like to kind of say well in nature they grow in this small nook on a tree which sort of true but also they develop multiple root systems because they're epiphytic plants and they attach so they don't have just one root system I, I never really understand this argument when people try to say, well, they grow like this in nature. Well, this is not nature. This is cultivation. 
different rules apply. Some of the rules we can transfer to cultivation, some rules we cannot. From my experience, it has not been really beneficial to keep them in the smallest pot possible. You do you, you do you, you, you grow however you want to grow. I'm, that's why I never comment on those. Everyone is free to do whatever they want. What I like to do and what I see a lot of growers who have been growing for many years, if you go and check out Summer Rain Oaks' video when she visited the late Oral Nye House, have you seen a pot that is tiny like that with a small cup? You haven't, and there is a reason for that. Doral was a very, very good grower. Look at Camilla, if you're friends with Camilla Gedin, or if you know Camilla Gedin. A lot of her poets grow in similar sized pots. So I really don't think this is true. I'm just gonna tell you here about my own experience, and actually I can show you a couple of examples, but you will have to wait. Be patient. Okay, I have two Hoyas here. One is Hoya Surigaoensis, and I got this this year as a two-leaf, one-note cutting, and as you can see she grew quite a lot. Would benefit from a trellis, but you know, I would also benefit from a million dollars. And as you can see, this plant has grown, despite me putting it in a 12 centimeter self-watering pot. I did root it in a small pot, but it was in there for maybe a month or less than a month. And as soon as I saw the roots, I decided to put it in this pot and I have faced no issues. I see a lot of the times when people ask why their plant is not growing, someone will say your pot is too big. And in some cases that can be true because you may have rotten the roots, especially if your mix is terrible. And if you choose unreasonably big pot, I wouldn't put this in a 15 or 20 centimeter pot, but what I'm trying to say is there, there's probably some other reason why your plant isn't growing. And I find that the size of the pot is not always the case, especially if you know that your roots are in a good condition. This is another one that I got as two leaf, one note cutting. I, if you remember, I ha it had those crappy leaves and it grew really well. This is Hoya Joy. She actually produced a larger vine that also absolutely needs a trellis. So she's growing really well. She was potted at uh, the same time as Surigoensis. So this is clearly not true that they're not gonna grow if you put them in a slightly larger, or if I like to say a more appropriate pot. And I do try to pot them right away in these pots, you know, pots they think are size appropriate. And we are actually gonna do that today with some of the cuttings that I have. Some Hoyas will prefer larger pots. It is said that Hoya Imperialis likes a really big pot and I don't have much experience with it. I used to have Hoya Imperialis that grew okay, but I decided I don't like the plant, so I kind of sold it. Now I have another one. I have a cutting from my friend Farah that came from Julie Kennedy and the original came from Doug Chamberlain. It is that very famous Hoya Imperialis that is supposed to bloom a lot. And Julie told me that this plant needs a very big pot because it grows to be huge, but it's absolutely worth it. Now, not all of the plants will need maybe such big pots. I have Hoya Melifla, which also comes from Julie. Mine is in a very small 15 centimeter pot compared, you know, to the size of the plant. And this plant, you know, it's trellis, so you don't see it, but it's, I would say, probably two meters long at this point. And the leaves are absolutely massive. Look at that. That is a whole, <laughs> that's a very, very big leaf. As we can see, the roots are not going out from the bottom of the pot. Now, I do see a tiny bit of rot here, and I do think that's because the way this pot wicks is through a layer of ceramics, so I don't think that that's maybe the best. I might unpot it and maybe put something like lacquer. I think eventually we, we will find out if this needs to be repotted because, you know, for example, if I scratch the top layer, I can feel that this is very, very matted and quite root bound, but we're gonna ignore that. I recently showed you this Hoya Globulosa Cow Bank and I would not repot this plant. First of all, this is a 12 centimeter pot. I think this is more than suitable. We do have roots coming out on the bottom, which may make you think it needs to be repotted, but I would not do it because I know there is a lot of space there in pond still. And I know that the reason this is going down is because of the whole wicking thing. Now, when I move the pond around on the top, for example, I, I can tell that there is a lot of room for the roots to grow here. Similarly with my two other Hoyas that have been potted this year, Surigaoensis, also has roots coming out, and that's because of the moisture at the bottom, and I do believe Joy as well. 
but I would not repot this yet because again, I know that I potted this this year. Maybe in a year I will repot them or maybe a year and a half, I'll, I'll think about it. We'll see how it goes. I would typically would not repot any Hoya more than once a year. Something that I will repot is this. I know this has been in this pot for a long time. This is however to Salata and this gets very dry. It drinks the water very quickly. You water it and in a day, it is already done. And I also see that some of these roots are also very dry. They're not in the best shape, which is also potentially a reason to repot your plant. You know, check on the roots. If you suspect that the roots are not great, or if you see something like this on the bottom, and I can see that these are very, very dry. Maybe then you can inspect the roots and see if your plant needs to be repotted. Also, if your plant does not want to hydrate, it's probably time to check on the roots. There might be root rot, or maybe there is some part of the root system that is saved so then you can you know change the mix repot it in that case and in, you know in those cases we are not talking about upsizing the pot maybe we can keep the same pot because not always will we repot to change the pot size sometimes we need to repot to change the mix i have another one here this has been in here for a long long time as well it's an okay size pot for this plant i think we're gonna put it in something similar i want to put most of my plants in self-watering because that works well for me but you know, we can see some roots coming out. Again, I would not repot this normally. We are repotting because we want her in self-watering. But for example, if you look here at the top, which you absolutely cannot see, we actually do have roots here as well, compared to those plants in Pawn, which don't have that. So their roots are really going straight for that water reservoir. These are not, these are finding moisture in the pot and they're growing in different directions, not just straight down. What I want to repot as well is so far away from me, can't reach it. I also showed you this plant. This is Hoya Pubicalix Pink Silver Ghost. It does have some roots going out on the bottom, but I want to repot it because I know this plant is going to get big. This is just a temporary pot that I put it in but I always knew I was going to repot it pretty quickly. Sometimes I will root these plants in such smaller pots, but they're not going to stay there for more than a month or so. Now, what pot you can choose? You can grow your Hoyas in terracotta pots. I have a lot of terracotta pots that I no longer use. It's perfectly fine if that is something that works for you. It does not work for me. The pots will get quite wet and there is already pretty high humidity in the room. They will also need more frequent watering and that is something that I also don't want to do. You can grow your Hoyas in nursery pots, plastic nursery pots, and that's what I used to do a lot. It works really great and you can also hack this to be self-watering. You can put microfiber, you are falling out. You can put microfiber here on the bottom and then find appropriate cover pot that will have enough space in the bottom for there to be a reservoir. Unfortunately, I could never find appropriate sized pot that will be tall enough that, you know, this will not fall through and there will be enough space at the bottom for a reservoir. You can grow in see-through pots. I like see-through pots quite a lot because you can see what is going on with the roots. You can see if they're root mealybugs. The downside of the see-through pots is you will get more algae, especially if you're growing in high light and especially if you're growing in something like pond. You can also grow in self-watering pots. I do now like to grow in self-watering pots. I don't think it's laziness. You know, it's just a large collection and I cannot spend all of my time watering the plants. I also have to record the videos. I will be potting in these see-through self-watering pots, which I do like like my only complaint is not my only complaint I have many complaints I would really like if this was combined if the inner pot was see-through but the outer pot was not and I could technically do this you get what I'm going for here then I would have like these outer pots that are a waste and you know nothing here is cheap in this setup so I'm not going to do it you can put in hydroponic pots those are the net pots I used to grow in those they work really really well very good pots, appropriate cover pot will also be necessary and they will require more watering. You can grow mounted Hoyas. I don't have a lot of experience with mounting Hoyas. I tried it once with my Hoya Wayati and it didn't go well, but that's because I find Hoya Wayati to have really thin and sensitive roots and I grow mine in pond and I don't actually keep it that moist either and it's growing really well finally. It grew well in Lekka as well. I could never grow it well in organic mix. I'm changing up my mix a bit because as you know, I'm not fully happy with pond. I do have some pumice here and this is the large pumice. You can kind of see here how big that is. 
And I will be mixing this in with coconut chips. I'm not particularly happy with this batch of cocoa chips. I bought a smaller batch, but that was quite expensive. And I thought this was going to be a good idea because these are dehydrated. And if you know anything about buying stuff dehydrated, it's usually much cheaper. But there are some longer fibers here. I'm not quite sure how I feel about those. But, you know, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to use it for my plants that are not too sensitive and then with more sensitive ones i guess i will buy like the most premium if i can even find something like that i'm also having some issues with the bark i ordered the best bark like it was supposed to be high quality bark and it used to be high quality bark but we had fungus nuts i know that i can boil the bark to get rid of those but honestly do i want to be boiling pond and boiling bark and doing all of this for the plants no, you gotta draw a line somewhere and I'm done with doing so many things. We are going to untrellis this and then in the second part of the video, we will trellis it again. I would also not repot a hoya that is super dehydrated unless you must. And if you suspect root rot, then that's fine. But if you can hydrate it, try that first. I would always try to hydrate the plant first. And if you see it's not working, then of course you do what you must. What is going on here? What are you doing? So as we can see, this is absolutely bone dry, but the roots are in much better condition than I suspected. This is going to go in self-watering pot and I'm not going to get rid of as much mix as possible. A lot of people do like to remove all the mix. I don't if the mix is okay and this is okay because there is a lot of perlite here. So we're going to be fine without removing the mix. With pawn, I also, you know, what falls off falls off, but I try not to remove it. Another issue with pawn that I have is when you do repot, these parts, you know, the roots are going to look very weird after you put fresh pawn in. I'm going to put a layer of leka to kind of help with wicking here. I'm not really sure what I'm doing, so don't follow maybe this part. This is like still experimental. We need some cocoa chips. And I do feel this is way too tall. I think I should have left more space. Yeah, I should have left a bit more space. Okay, well, this is not a tutorial. I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle the pumice through without any sort of order or sense and add the cocoa peat without compressing, or actually cocoa chips, without compressing stuff too much. And I feel it's good that we're doing this in see-through pods because I, I will be able to kind of inspect how my new system is working out. So that looks okay. So you can see there is still a lot of room to kind of compress this, but we're not going to compress it. So it is very airy and I do hope that with Leka this will be able to stay moist enough. I would like to pot some cuttings. I want to shock you, right? Same process. I have this Carnosa. I'm going to put this Carnosa in this pot. I know this plant is going to grow pretty fast. I know there is no reason for me to put it in a tiny pot. It's going to be completely fine with a good mix and I don't want to be repotting all the time. This is one of those instances where, you know, the plant has big leaves, I know it will grow big. I will just put it in this pot because we don't want to be repotting again in a month once the small pot has been filled. We're just not gonna even try too much with this Carnosa. So that's what that looks like. It will get a trellis, maybe. This is one of those instances where a cutting will go right away into a pot that is appropriately sized. I'm not even going to say a large pot. I think this is very appropriate because this plant is going to grow pretty fast. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Join me next week to trellis some Hoyas because expert, right? If you have any questions about pot sizes, about what pots to use, you can leave them down in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel because we frequently talk about Hoyas. When I say frequently, I mean all the time. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. I know it's a lot of Hoya talk. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you very soon. Like literally in a second. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons, my three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moyn, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Catherine Molina, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Dean Sikorsky, Deepanjali Rao, Farah, Gina K, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppencamp, Hoji Scott, Husband Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavan Denot, Kara, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelso, Kiwi Mochi, Kristen Sherwood, Leflanda Staff, Mandy Milliken, 
Marcel Har, Marcelina Novosatsky, Mario West, Mars B, Martina, Alif Burday, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Moa Edman, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropical, Sneena Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ, Plant Druid, Planting with Nat, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Roos, Saloma Dahl, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya Tessa Martins, Tristan Thomas, The One True Kyle, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Ksenia Green, Youth, The Wallamut, Zardarama, and Zlokov Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Andy H, Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brana Phillips, Colleen Coyle, Levi, Constance, Kilon, Claudia L, Erin Keenan, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Plantolenia, Ringlov, and Tang Watana Sriakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Kari, Christina Greengrass, Couture Helvetica, Edith W, Emilia Bronson, Jonna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ansubramanian, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chinmuller. Thank you.